Oh, are we filming? Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Sorry, I don't have a lot of time to talk right now. I'm a bit busy uh, chopping up our lifeboat. He's serious. I never thought that I would be in the middle of the ocean chopping up the only boat we have, but here we are. So for a bit of context, we got swallowed by a whale in the South Seas after our ship was sunk during a thunderstorm, and then we got stranded in the light in our lifeboat. A lifeboat. Our precious, life-saving lifeboat is the only thing between us and fathomless water. Yeah. I'm gonna go chop up some more. Rory thinks this is gonna save our lives. Yeah, well, this plan has been tested and successful. Successful? That was a cartoon! This plan was successful in a Disney cartoon from 1940. They're chopping up our lifeboat for firewood. It's gonna work. The smoke is going to irritate the whale who's gonna need to go up to the surface for air. And in the process, he'll eject us. I think you two have lost your minds. I honestly do. See, I know you're scared. But if we don't do it now, we're never going to get out of this fish or mammal. But how are we going to survive on the surface without a boat? That sounds like a problem for the surface. <laughs> how can you say that? I mean, we don't know that this is going to make the whale sick. We don't know what's going to happen when it ejects us. And we don't know what's going to happen when we're back floating around on the open ocean. Honestly, see, I, I don't have an answer for you, but I, I get why you're scared. Water is scary for a lot of people who don't know what it is that's underneath them. You know, people feel like there's nothing at all that's beneath them. It's like you're treading water. And if you stop at any moment, then you'll just sink right to the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty much how I feel. I mean, Triple H, how do we know that when we leave this whale, we won't just immediately drown in the ocean? You just have to have faith. If we stay down here forever, we'll never make it. We need to make a definite decision now, because there's no other options. That's why we have to rely on God the most, because there's nothing else between us and those crazy waves. You know, this reminds me of a story from the book of Matthew. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus was doing his ministry all over Israel. Everywhere he went, huge crowds came to see him and hear what he had to say. Sometimes, speaking to so many people was exhausting for Jesus. He would start to lose his voice and energy. One day... Jesus had had just about enough of people. Guys, I am beat. I barely have enough energy to lift my legs. Jesus, you just spoke to almost 10,000 people. No one blames you for needing a break. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate that. Tell you what, guys. I need a bit of solitude to recharge myself. I'm going to go up into the hills to pray and be alone. Why don't you take the boat back across the lake to our residence? I'll meet you there when I'm ready to come. Oh, um, sure thing, Jesus. As long as you're sure you know the way back. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll see you guys soon. The disciples left Jesus just like he wanted and got onto their boat to cut across the Sea of Galilee to their residence. But as they were sailing, a powerful wind suddenly surged up out of nowhere. The water began to thrash, and huge waves threatened to overturn the disciples' boat. We just have to stay here until the wind stops. There's nothing else we can do. I don't think we'll make it until then. Our boat is barely able to stay afloat as is. I wish Jesus was here. He would just order the wind to stop, and we'd be safe. 
But I am here, James. It's a ghost! It's a spirit! I'm not a ghost. It's me, Jesus. Don't be afraid, guys. I wouldn't leave you to go over these rough waters by yourself. Jesus, how can that be you? We left you in the hills miles from here. How did you find us? I heard you crying out to me, and I came to help you. Don't worry. This storm won't be able to hurt you or overturn your boat, because I have commanded it to leave you alone. Teacher, I don't know what to believe. I mean, I'm looking at you standing there on the water right in front of me, but I don't understand how any of this is possible. Why don't I understand? In time, you will understand, Peter. It's enough for right now just to accept that I'm here to save you. Do you at least believe that? I will, if I can come walk on the water with you. If I can step out on the water and walk on it like solid ground the way that you are, then I can touch your face myself and know that it's really you. If you say so, Peter. In that case, come on out of the boat and walk toward me. If you truly believe in me, you won't fall through. Boldly, Peter stepped out of the boat. To the amazement of all the disciples, he was able to stand on the water as if it were solid, just like Jesus had said. Peter began walking towards Jesus, who was waiting for him with outstretched arms. But the wind was howling, and the waves seemed to be growing even taller. When Peter saw the violent waters, he was so frightened that he even forgot about Jesus standing in front of him. All he could think of was falling through the water and drowning. And that's just what happened. As soon as Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he fell in the water and began to flounder. And the other disciples looked on with horror as Peter struggled to stay afloat. But Jesus came to Peter and took him firmly by the hand. Peter, why did you doubt me? You saw me walking safely on the water, and you even came out to join me. But even though you weren't in any danger... You let your fear get a hold of you. Why do you have so little faith? Jesus, I'm sorry. Please take me back to the boat. I don't want to be out here anymore. Jesus brought Peter back to the boat. As soon as the two of them had gotten inside, the wind stopped howling, and the water became as still and calm as glass. The disciples were in awe of Jesus, and they worshipped him. You know, I can, uh... I can really empathize with Peter in that story. I mean, falling into the Sea of Galilee like that, he must have been terrified. No doubt. But Jesus didn't let them drown. When the disciples needed them, Jesus went out onto the sea and found them. And when Peter's faith faltered and he fell into the water, Jesus got him back to the boat. You know, man, it's... uh. It's really comforting to know that Jesus is looking out for us like that. Okay, guys. I just finished disassembling the stern and the rudder. Disassembling? Well, hack and fits. I mean, I guess there's no going back now. Hey, Rory, where's the extra hatchet? I'll help you disassemble the bow as well. That's the spirit. <laughs> Did you feel that? The whale's stomach is grumbling. I guess the smoke's finally working on that mammal. The stomach acid, it's, it's bubbling. I think the stomach is beginning to start its regurgitation process. It's getting rid of the rumbling and stumbling. Us! I'm gonna some food, guys! We'll see each other on the surface! 